If you're mechanical, start playing patient. If you're patient, you need to get mechanical. A patient mechanical player is unstoppable. That's a Twitter post I made that went viral. Well, at least viral for my 1K follower standards. But the problem everyone asked in response is, Luke, what if I'm already a game sense player? How do you get mechanical fast? So in this video, I'm going to be ranking every mechanic from hardest to easiest. That way you can prioritize what you should learn ahead of the fact. And if you're new here, what I'm mainly known for is not playing, but actually coaching. I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program. It's called the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we help plat through champ ranked players get GC in just six weeks flat. We just crossed over 2,600 students in the program. And if you didn't see, we actually just announced on Discord that we have three spots remaining before we sell out. Once we sell out these last three, we're gonna have to pause enrollment until some of our active students finish training and more spots reopen. So if you're plat through champ ranked watching and you want one of those last three spots, DM my discord with the keyword mech and we can talk details. Click the first link in the description to join the discord and message us below. Otherwise, let's rank mechanics. All right, two things. Number one, this video is going to be tier list style. So we're going to start with S tier and go all the way down to F tier for ranking up. Number two, this list is going to go hardest to easiest. So for example, S tier is an easy, high reward mechanic. You know, learn this to rank up fast. Whereas F or the bottom of the list will be reserved for the harder mechanics, you know, mechanics that are going to take you tens, hundreds, if not thousands of hours to learn, or that may otherwise just have a low payoff or low reward in ranked. All right, mechanic number one on the list, kickoffs. Now, when we're talking kickoffs, what I'm referring to is simply double flip kickoffs. We're not, we'll save speed flips for a second. But when I say double flip kickoffs, I mean being able to flip once as you're driving to the ball and then, you know, land in time. That way you can flip again on the actual 50-50. And while this might seem like something stupid to have on a tier list, like is a kickoff a mechanic? From what I've seen coaching gold, plat, and diamond ranked players, we need to talk about kickoffs. <laughs> kickoffs are going in the S tier. For some reason, I think it's because they're so obvious. People at the low ranks just completely skip kickoffs. Like I see people all the way up in champ one, champ two, top 10, 15, 20% of the player base literally just driving to the kickoffs, like not flipping at all. Like I'm not saying you have to speed flip, but can we flip to the kickoff? You know, it'll help you save boost. It'll help you recover faster. It'll add speed. It's just, it's going to happen every game. Like kickoffs are happening at the start of every game, multiple times a game. There is no reason that kickoffs shouldn't be one of the first things. It sh they should be very high on your list. So for that reason, I hope nobody would disagree with saying that for the average player, you got to put these in S tier. They're going to have such a high impact in your games. And they're so easy to learn. Like get your kickoff down and you will shoot through the lower ranks. I'm serious. I'll have like a, one of my two minute kickoff tutorials on screen, literally two minutes. You should give it a watch, but you can watch that and all of the other mechanics tutorials I'll have referenced after this in the cards. The cards are going to be over here. Merch, do the card effect. Thank you, Merch. You're killing it. Number two, number two. Yes, number two, fast aerials. So what I mean is not like just being able to double jump an aerial off the ground, but I genuinely mean a fast aerial. And if you don't know what the difference is, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but watch my two minute tutorial on fast aerials. The point is, Fast aerials, they're high value. We're putting them in the A tier. And the reason is because number one, in terms of benefit, if you get them down consistently, you will have like a half second advantage on everyone that doesn't know them, which is half the people below GC don't fast aerial properly. It's actually insane. But not only that, in terms of how many hours it's going to take you to learn, just like with kickoffs, you know, yes, you have to spend some time learning the mechanical movement, you know, on the joystick and making sure you can press the button properly without backflipping. <laughs> but once you do that, and once you kind of, you know, learn to ride the bike, you know how to ride the bike forever. So for that reason, I classify fast aerials in a group of mechanics that you're going to hear me talk about more as we go on called one and done mechanics. And you'll notice all these one and done mechanics are very high on the list because once you know it, you know it, and you're going to be able to use it tons of times in your game. Only reason it's not S tier is because it's an aerial. Like aerials are super common at the high ranks, but at the low ranks, not as common 
A tier, not S. Still should learn. Learn how to fast aerial. Number three, this is going to be controversial. Wave dashes. I'm going to put wave dashes in the C. And this is going to sound crazy to people. It's one of the most classic like beginner mechanics to learn. You know, a lot of YouTube creators, myself included in the past, have preached, you know, you need to learn how to wave dash. Wave dashes are super important. And while yes, they improve your recoveries super useful. Yes, they're a one and done mechanic. You know, once you know how to do them, you kind of know how to do them. And while yes, they will provide a speed boost and come up a lot in your games, the actual benefit you get from knowing how to wave dash consistently, like you're going to use it all the time. You're going to go on and off the walls with wave dashing. It's going to make you faster, but by how much? Like if I had to pick one of these, right? And I could say, I want you to be 100% consistent on your kickoffs or 100% consistent on your wave dashes. I would rather give you kickoffs. You're going to win way more games if I give you kickoffs. So for that reason, I can't put wave dashes super high on the list. It is common. It's going to just straight up improve your overall gameplay, but it's not going to help you rank up. Like it's not a game changing mechanic. It's fundamental, not game changing. Next on the list, another one and done mechanic, we have half flips. Half flips, for all the reasons that I just described about wave dashes, are going to get one tier higher of a rating. They're going to go B tier on my list. I recommend you learn half flips before wave dashes. Why? Well, on the surface, yes, half flips are more difficult than wave dashes. But point is, even though, yes, it's harder than wave dashes to learn, the benefit in game, like the improvement that you will get from not knowing how to half flip to knowing how to half flip is huge. There are tons of situations in game where half flips are just genuinely like the fastest way to get from point A to point B. And especially if you're at the low ranks, you're probably going to be positioning poorly. And the main benefit of half flips is they're the fastest way to turn around. Honestly, it's got to even be better than fast aerials. Change my mind already. Half flips has got to be A tier because you're going to use half flips more than fast aerials. And fast aerials are game changing. Half flips are game changing. Learn half flips. Absolute A tier mechanic. Okay, I'm going to get comments for this one. Speed flips. Speed flips are incredibly hard to rank. In a previous list, I put speed flips as S tier. However, I think I was wrong. The thing that many people commented about speed flips is, yes, they are a straight up game changing mechanic. Like when you know how to speed flip, you're straight up, fa it's the fastest flip in Rocket League. We'll be able to move around the field quicker with more boost efficiency and just benefit. You'll, you'll benefit in so many situations. So while that is true, I think I overlooked how hard they are to learn. It's easy for me to sit here, you know, having learned the speed flip a year and a half ago, two years ago and be like, oh, speed flips are easy. You just do this, this on the joystick, right? Just because it's simple doesn't make it easy. And especially if you're not as mechanically cracked, right? That's going to make it take even longer to learn. So although speed flips are game changing, you just will have an advantage on every kickoff and all around the field if you can speed flip. For some people, they're very challenging to learn. So I'm going to put them in B tier for the average player, assuming that, you know, you're not mechanically gifted. However, I will say if you are mechanically gifted and it's like that factor aside, you know, it's super easy for you to learn speed flips. Well, then you're going to get a massive benefit. If you're super mechanically gifted and it's super easy to learn, then these are like S tier, but I stand corrected. I appreciate the comments. Speed flips, super useful. One and done mechanic technically B tier though, because they're difficult to learn. Next on the list, air roll. Okay, so I'm going to be breaking up air roll into two categories because I got a lot of questions about this last time. And I really think joystick air roll. So you know, the air roll where you have to push down on your joystick and press an input to control versus directional air roll. I think these are different enough that they warrant different rankings. Uh, and I'll explain why. I'm going to put joystick air roll just below fast aerials in the A tier. And when I say joystick air roll, I have to be really clear about what I mean. I'm not talking about fancy air roll adjustments. I'm not talking about being able to spin consistently in the air. I'm talking about when falling, you know, out of the sky from an aerial. Can you air roll your car so that way you land on all four wheels? And I think it is important enough to be an A tier. Why? Super easy to learn. It's not going to take too much time and it's, it's super beneficial. You know, there are going to be many times where you're falling out of the air, whether you just went up for an aerial, you just jumped. And, you know, if you can land quicker, whether it's off the wall, off an aerial, huge benefit. You're going to play faster, right? Air roll left and right. However, unfortunately, we're going to have to drop this way down. I'm just going to call it air roll left because that's what I use. But I'm putting air roll left in the C tier, right below 
below wave dashes. And the reason being is because yes, air roll is super important at the high ranks, right? Understanding directional air roll, it completely changes how you can play the game. However, for the average player, could I sit here and feel good about myself recommending that you sink the amount of time needed to learn directional air roll into learning it if you're not already champ two, champ three, GC, you know, near the top 5%, top 1% already. I would feel bad if I told like a gold or plat player to go learn directional air roll because I can say without a doubt, air roll left is the hardest mechanic to learn on this entire list. And the reason is because it's not one mechanic. Air roll left is the combination of understanding how to air roll when you're facing forward versus when your car is facing upside down, backwards, versus when it's facing sideways, versus when it's facing, you know, to the left, to the right. Air roll left or air roll right is not one mechanic. It's how, understanding how to control your car when you're facing all those directions and everywhere in between and being able to combine the joystick movements like tornado spin versus normal air roll. I can't even begin to get into all the details on air roll left or right. So while yes, it is useful because it's so hard to learn. I mean, this will take you hundreds, if not thousands of hours to master. It's got to go low on the list. Like I just, I could never recommend this to somebody to learn until you're, you know, high champ mid to high champ GC, that's when I would say like, okay, you know, if you really want to get mechanical, you're going to need to get mechanical at those ranks. But you know what, for that reason, I'm putting it D tier. I hope you guys see why I'm doing that. Which actually leads nicely into the last air roll mechanic, air roll shots. And wh what I mean by air roll shots, by the way, guys, these are shots where, you know, you're jumping off the ground, single jump, you do a slight air roll tilt, whether it's tilting your car to the left or to the right, and then, you know, diagonal dodge through the ball, you know, flip through it. That's what I mean by air roll shots. Really, the benefit of air roll shots, they open up slightly tighter angles that you couldn't hit without air roll shots. And so for that reason, they start to become incredibly useful once you push up, you know, more through through the champ ranks and you know you're you're getting closer to GC but below that I mean look just stock power shots being able to hit the ball hard and dodge at the right time most most players don't even have that <laughs> so if you can just step one hit the ball consistently before you worry about arrow shots you're going to be much better off you know yes arrow shots are useful and they are a little tricky to learn um because honestly, most people overdo them. Less is more. Arrow shots for that reason, they're going to go on my B tier. We're just going to drop them there for now. Moving on to next on the list, I'm going to grab power shots. So ground shots, power shots, power clears, whatever you want to call these, they are going to absolutely be A tier. Simply being able to time your flip properly to meet with the ball on its up bounce to be able to generate power on a power shot, whether you're clearing the ball, shooting the ball, passing the ball, whatever it may be. This is so valuable that it has to go a tier it sounds so simple but genuinely like the hardest part about rocket league is just consistency yeah anybody can make a ground shot on target once but like can you do it 10 out of 10 times i i, I can't say i can <laughs> so for that reason ground shots are so beneficial you know they take a long time to master but they're so beneficial you're gonna see so much returns just from training them out at the start for that reason they have to be a tier they are so high value and i hope nobody disagrees with me about that you know, you're probably sick of me telling you what you should learn. Why don't we start getting toxic? Why don't I start banning some mechanics? I am going to be banning, and this might be a shocker for some of you, redirects. As in, you're cherry picking up the field, you just, you're in the opponent's corner, teammate sends the ball into your corner, and you know, Justin, you get you hit the crate and it bang, you redirect down into the net. Redirects, as sick as they are, I, we all want to be Justin, F tier. And the reason they're F tier, I used to love redirects. I would train them so much in training packs. Um, but the reason redirects are F tier is because think about it. When are you going to be using a redirect in game at the low ranks? The answer is when you are out of position, pushed up, upfield. So <laughs> the only situation where you're using redirect is if you overcommitted. And maybe you're the type of player that likes to overcommit, but that's not a good reason to learn <laughs> redirect. Um, yes, you know, at the pro levels, passing. Yes, it's important for them, but for the average player, man, I'm banning redirect training for ranking up. I have to, I know I have to say that. If you just want to have fun, have fun. I like to have fun too. That's why I used to train them. Don't train redirects thinking they're going to help you rank up. I am sorry. Don't hate the message, hate the messenger. Oh wait, no. Don't hate the messenger, hate the message or something. Don't hate me, hopefully. Let's ban more mechanics. I'm in, I'm in the banning mood. Ceiling shots, not as terrible as redirects. They're going to go E tier. Double taps, not as terrible as ceiling shots. They're going to go top of E tier. Flip resets, just as bad as redirects. Flip resets go in the F tier. Hopefully nobody disagrees with me on that. <laughs> the reason I'm just going to batch these up all together, they, they all fall into the same camp. 
pretty hard to learn and extremely rare you're going to find a chance to use this at the low ranks so i mean they've just got to go low on the list and just one last note on these yeah the reason double taps and ceiling shots are higher than flip resets is because they're slightly easier to learn and slightly more useful however air dribbles next mechanic i'm going to put significantly higher on this list they are still very hard to learn you have to learn the same aerial car control that you need to learn for double tap ceiling shots flip resets right however there are way more situations that they're useful in game so for that reason we're gonna put them c tier for you and they're gonna be in the same tier as wave dashes but you know for completely different reasons right air dribbles super hard to learn however very beneficial in some cases wave dashes super easy to learn the benefit not massive benefit you know if anything okay i'd put air dribbles below wave dashes you know you got to learn wave dashes before air dribbles i'm not trying to clickbait that hard oh okay next one this next mechanic i'm gonna call it something you may not have heard it called before but i'm gonna put carries and pops into the same mechanic i'm gonna call carries and pops the same mechanic and what i mean by carries and pops is what most people mean when they say dribbling you know like just dribbling the ball on your car the reason i'm separating carries and pops from you know flicks and from you know just dribbling in general is because i think dribbling means a lot of different things and i'm just gonna call like level zero of it you know the basics just like being able to keep the ball in your car and like do a single jump and pop it up the ability to do that is super useful i would say it is B tier. And the reason it's not higher, like you might think like, oh, basic dribbling. Luke, shouldn't I be using that all the time at lower ranks? The truth is no. And the reason is because at least, you know, from my experience, the ranked ladder kind of flips as you go from low to high rank. So high rank, I'm talking GC, GC2, GC3, SSL, pro level. The game is a game of possession. Whichever team has the ball is going to usually win. However, at the low ranks, gold, plat, diamond <laughs> the game is more a game of pressure you know you can win at these lower ranks by simply just hitting the ball hard and keeping it on the opponent's side of the field that's going to be your safer bet than you know trying to carry the ball in front of your net or carry the ball across the field that's a little mechanically more difficult for that reason carries and pops are absolutely useful especially for the average player you know i don't want things to get twisted but you know ground shots the half flips fast arrows these things they've got to be more useful in my opinion making single touch plays hitting the ball once with power and being able to hit it hard is more important for beginners than is being able to control the ball and flick it at the end that's a lot harder so for that reason carries and pops b tier next mechanic bounce dribbles or bounce dribble shots is going to go into my a tier now the reason is because what i mean by bounce dribbling is simply being able to time the ball on its up bounce it doesn't look like a mechanic right? It's just timing. You just have to drive at the right place at the right time, but this is hard. And if you've ever tried my hot potato drill that you may have seen me talk about in videos where, you know, you're just trying to keep that bounce without it touching twice, you'll realize how hard this is. But the reason they get A tier is because while they are deceivingly hard, they are like the lowest risk, highest reward way to score in 1v1 situations. Like they're just, they're so useful. And like, if you ever watched like, you know, a high ranked ones player, for example, like, you know, Ocal had pioneered the strategy, but now this is just high ranked ones. If you understand 1v1, you understand why bounce dribbles are so important. And so, you know, once again, beginners, you don't need to control the ball. Just focus on ground shots, booming it away. Once you start to push through diamond, once you start to push through champ, that's when bounce dribbles, in my opinion, are going to be a really useful tool if you have them down there. I mean, they're just lethal. And bounce dribbles get a spot in my A tier. So where does that leave flicks? They get my C tier. I think the community and the average player overrates flicks very hard. They think flicks is like synonymous with dribble. Like flicks is the way to score. Like you get the ball, you know, I'll see like the classic like diamond or champ. They get the ball. The only thing they know how to do, like what they do every time they get the ball is they just go for flicks. And the thing you've got to understand, this is a mechanic you use to beat one defender to outplay one person if you're playing 3v3 and 2v2 and every time you get the ball you're flicking it away and sending possession back to the other team yeah you're beating one defender but you're rarely beating more than that and so for that reason the reward isn't as high as bounce dribbles like bounce dribbles you know you're in a 2v1 you can bounce dribble around the first one shoot on the second score flicks you flick it over the first one second guy just saves it and so for that reason i'm gonna put flicks in the c tier basic front flip flicks i'm talking about moving on to advanced flicks 45 degree flicks musty flicks breezy flicks unfortunately are going down in the f tier 
I love you, Musty. Love you, Breezy, as well. Love you guys. Your mechanics are sick. When we're talking about ranking up, this is no shock. Musty Flicks are not the rank up secret. They have all the problems that normal flicks have, but not only is it, does it only usually beat one defender, the situations they come up in game, it's so hard. You need so much space, right, to set up a musty flick. And then even then, it's so hard to learn and then so hard to execute. And then what, you beat one defender with a musty flick? I mean, um, it's, it's low on the list, F tier. This leaves us with just a few mechanics. Curve dash slash wall dash slash chain dash slash any fancy dash f tier i've learned all these mechanics you know curve dash does it make me faster yes wall dash does it make me faster slightly marginally faster donkey dash does it make you faster yes like all these dashes will increase your recovery and it's gonna happen all around the field but let's start with just rotating back post before we're wall dashing right so for those reasons no shocker f dash on all these you know fancy dashes they don't have a super big benefit so we got to put them at the bottom of the list but moving on to the next mechanic backwards saves I'm going to put backward saves on the B tier. You know, maybe they should be a C tier mechanic, but I'm going to put them B because they get a buff. If it's a defensive mechanic, it gets one tier higher for me. And that's because for whatever reason, nobody trains defensive mechanics. Like what, you know, whenever somebody's typing in my Twitch chat, you know, what do I need? What mechanic do I need to rank up? The only things people think about are like the air dribbles, the flip resets, the, the offensive stuff. Nobody thinks like, huh, I really can't save the ball when my car is facing backwards or, you know, or I really struggle off the backboard. These are very common things. Like 50% of the game, you're going to be offense. 50% of the game, you're going to be defense. Yet everybody's spending 80% of the time training flip resets. And most people don't even spend 10% of the time training backward saves. I know I didn't. For that reason, backward saves get a big buff because man, I mean, most of the time, yeah, back post is just going to make things easy. It's going to make things safe. But sometimes you're going to be in a 1v1. You don't have time to rotate back post or it's not best to rotate back post in those situations you're gonna need to be comfortable saving the ball backwards for that reason they go in my b tier like my face is starting to get sore from all this like emotional like i'm i'm getting emotional here i'm talking where even were me uh backboard clears okay it's got to be top of c tier the reason is because backboard clears and saves super important once you hit champ once you start to get around that top 10 percent of the player base you know more 1v1 situations people's mechanics get better more of the games happening in the air playing on the backboard naturally becomes more important along with it. Backboard clears and saves are going to be super important once you start to get into that high diamond, you know, low champ area. But once again, for the average player, if we're just talking plat diamond, you don't need to be on your backboard a lot. You just don't. Like if you're back post, you're good. You're golden 99% of the time. If you're an intermediate ranked player, they're, they should be on your radar. But if you're just average or anything below it, then I would say C tier. Backboard clear, saves, backboard play. Let's just ban another mechanic while we're at it. Passing. I'm going to give you permission, champ twos. I'm going to give you permission right now to not pass. I'm a terrible person. And the reason passing is going in the E tier is because while yes, not too complicated in theory, super useful at the high ranks, the problem is when we talk about the average player. Can two average players, step one, pass the ball, and then step two, shoot that pass consistently? The problem is <laughs> the average player is very much not consistent at Rocket League. That's why Rocket League is so hard. When I make, you know, videos for the average player, I just can't recommend that you pass because if you pass, you're relying on your average teammate to be aware of the pass, receive the pass, score the pass. And, you know, of course, this is dependent on the game mode you're in 2v2, 3v3. You know, 3v3, passing gets a buff. 2v2, it gets a debuff. If you're a champ 3v3 player, I could put passing in B tier for you. Ah, wall play. We're going to put wall play in the middle of B tier. It's above carries and pops. Why? Well, because wall play, when I'm talking about wall play, I just mean like hitting the ball hard off the wall. That's a single touch mechanic. Just being able to hit the ball consistently. Obviously very important. Going to come up a lot in your games. A lot of people overlook wall play because it's not flashy. When most people think aerials, they don't think wall play. But I mean, fundamentally, going up the wall is one of the fastest ways to gain height, get in the air. It's super useful and it's not too hard to learn. I mean, it is tricky to, to learn how to orient yourself sideways, but you know, if you're taking up off the left wall, it's the same thing every time. If you're going off the right wall, same thing every time. So if you learn it, you'll be super set. It's going to have a massive positive impact on your games. Two last mechanics that I kind of haven't covered. And you know, there may be others on this list that I'm neglecting. Pinches. 
Pinches, I think, are their own mechanic. We're gonna count them as one. But pinches are gonna go D tier. Uh, they're right next to directional air roll, but for very different reasons. Pinches are a lot easier to learn than air roll after air roll right. A, a gold can pinch the ball. So I guess they're they're pretty easy to learn, but they're hard to master, right? Like actually being able to consistently control and time like a ground pinch, like a pulse fire ground pinch, like I'm, I'm talking a proper one that will go in the net, ceiling pinches, all that stuff. I mean, man, they're so hard to control. And even players who like can control them still aren't consistent with them. They're so hard. Uh, and then, you know, 50-50s. I don't know if I can call these a mechanic because 50-50s are like reading the opponent and like being able to position your car behind the ball. But um, there's so many levels to 50 50s there are like drive challenges there's single jump there's you know full commits full challenges where you're flipping through it fake challenges the situation varies which one you'll need for the average player like this isn't really something you can train so 50 50s like they can't even really go on this list right because they're not a mechanic you can train you got to play so like all these mechanics that i'm including i'm only including mechanics you can train you you can't train 50 50s but they're super useful so 50 50s they go on the spooky tier they're out of the matrix they're important they're hard to master. You should learn them. I can't really put them on this tier list. And that's a cop out. I know. And I'm copping out. Am I happy with this list? I really am not. Are you happy with this list? No, you're probably not. And besides, what are you going to do after you watch this? Probably just go train air dribbles anyway. So um, yeah, you know what? Here's the link to my air dribble tutorial. Go learn how to air dribble. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys for uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you there. <laughs>